Hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Who's excited to be here? Hi, you guys. Welcome, welcome. You are here for the Gut Health Masterclass. It, well, if that's what you're here for, you're in the right spot, yeah? Um, welcome, you guys. Come on in. Come on in and say hi in the chat. You can see me okay. You can hear me okay. Um, I'd love to know where you're tuning in from. Let me know your name, where you're tuning in from. I love connecting with all of you. It's one of the best uh, pieces of all of this work. Hello, hello. Hi, Caroline. Welcome, you guys. We're going to wait just like another minute or two, and then we're going to hop into today's presentation, yeah, today's class. Um, hi, Bria uh, from Riverside, California. Hello, Carol. Aloha from Hawaii. Okay. I see you. So fun. Um, we have Somerville, Massachusetts. Hello, you guys. Welcome, welcome. Terry from Hagerstown, Maryland. Welcome, you guys. I'm so excited to dive into today's class with you all today. Um, let's see. We have Lauren from Orlando. Hello, Lauren from Orlando. Uh, Rachel, she says, hi, I'm in Indianapolis. Um, hello, you guys. Welcome, welcome. Cool. So we've had <laughs> a total of like 460 people sign up for these three classes that I'm teaching today and tomorrow. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot of people. So pumped to have you all here. Um, and if you don't know who the heck I am, my name is Hannah Aylward. I'm a certified holistic health coach and I specialize in gut health. So I've dealt with a lot of digestive issues myself in the past. We're gonna get into my story a little bit and then we're gonna get into my method. We're gonna get into all the good stuff and I'm more than happy to answer questions. Um, so we'll always have like a, every masterclass I do, we have like a 15 to 20 minute Q and A at the end. Um, after I get through the presentation, because if I'm interrupting it to answer questions the whole time, I'll just get off on some tangents and then we'll be talking and we'll be in here for three hours. Yeah. So um, how it's going to go is I'm going to go through the presentation and then I'll answer all the questions at the end. And then I have Teresa in here as well. Um, and Teresa is going to collect all of your questions. There she is. Um, she's going to collect all your questions. So you can pop them in the chat throughout this presentation. She's going to collect them and then shoot them to me at the end of class because she's on my team. Yeah. Cool. Um, let's see. Congrats. Thank you. I'm so excited. So badly. Yes. Yes. Jana. Hi, Jana. Um, wonderful. Hello, everyone. Okay. Beautiful. Um, Jeanette from Kansas. Awesome, you guys. So I'm so excited to be here. Yay. Claire from Wisconsin. Cool, you guys. So like I said, my name is Hannah Elward. I'm a certified holistic health coach. I specialize in gut health. It is my freaking jam. I always say uh, tech, not so much, right? So I'm pretty sure that you guys will be able to hear and see everything throughout this. If you can't, shoot us a little message in the chat. Um, I'm going to share some slides. I built a beautiful presentation for all of you today. I think it's a lot easier to kind of like read the words on the slide and to integrate the information than to just simply listen to me speak the entire time. Um, and so you can also take notes from the slides and all of that good stuff. It just feels a little bit more conducive, conducive to learning, yeah? So as if we're in class, um, as if we're in school, because we basically are. Um, so I'm gonna pull up these slides and then we're gonna get going and then we'll answer questions at the end. Are we ready? I'm really, really excited for this, you guys. Thank you for, spending your evening or your afternoon with me wherever you are in the world. Um, and yeah, let's do it. So I'm going to share my screen and I'll try to do it as gracefully as possible. And then I'm also going to take my face off the camera while we go through all these slides because it can be a little bit distracting. I like to talk with my hands. I get very into it. Um, and then you're going to like see me in the corner with my hands everywhere. So we'll avoid that. Um, and then you'll get all the information from these slides. So let me pull this up for all of you and we will get into it. Beautiful. Okay, wonderful. Oh, I do this every time you guys, I forget to turn my camera off and then here we go. <laughs> See you in a bit. <laughs> um, okay, I always do that and let's see if I can do this correctly. Thanks for bearing with me. Okay, there we go. Beautiful. So. This is the three-phase system to transforming your digestion and ditching your digestive issues for good when it feels like nothing else has worked. So 
Y'all, I really know the pain. <laughs> I suffered for years myself with lots of different programs, lots of um, unanswered questions and a really like a strong lack of support um, for many years and, and a serious overwhelm as well. So that's really why I teach this work today. So you all can avoid feeling the same way that I did, searching, overwhelm, Google deep dives, all of the things, right? We want to avoid all of that. We want to get you the help that you need. Um, so today we're going to be re referring to my three-phase good gut formula that I created over the last like eight or so years um, of all of my education and research. Now, um, just before we really dive in, quick disclaimer, none of this is information should be really taken as medical advice. These recommendations and all recommendations in this presentation are not intended to diagnose or treat or cure any medical condition. Incorporating any of these recommendations should always be cleared first with your licensed medical provider. Now today I'm going to show you how you can make the ultimate transformation from never ending digestive issues, pain and low energy that rules your life to living in a pain free connected and energized body that you absolutely love. Let me know if this sounds good to you in the comments within I'm in. Awesome, you guys. Okay, and before we really dive in, um, here's the thing I want everyone to really learn and integrate this information and allow yourself to focus on this, right? So go ahead and put those phones on airplane mode, exit out of the million tabs that you have open. If you're anything like me, my computer gets a little cray cray sometimes. Um, and shut off any distractions if that's possible. Maybe you put in headphones, whatever that looks like to you, because you've signed up for this class because you need this information and you are in pain. So let's really focus here, drop in, and let this be a really sacred moment for you and your own transformation. Signing up for this class alone is a big deal. I'm very proud of you for being here. So let's allow it to like work its good work, yeah? So quickly before we dive in, I wanna invite everyone on the call here to just get really comfortable in your seat, wherever you're sitting or laying down or wherever you are. And then we're just gonna take three deep belly breaths in here together, because I know many of us have already had very long days, right? <laughs> Regardless of where we are. So we're gonna take a deep inhale through the nose together, really expanding that lower belly and a deep exhale out of your mouth. <sighs> Beautiful, making a noise if that feels good. No judgment here. Deep inhale through the nose. Expanding that lower belly. Deep exhale out of the mouth. Bringing that belly button into the spine. Beautiful. Deep inhale through the nose. Deepest one yet. Allowing each cell to be a little bit more revitalized with every sip of air. And a deep exhale out of the mouth, sighing it all out, letting that face really melt down. Any tension that you're storing in the face, in the cheekbones, along the eyes, and allowing your shoulders to kind of wiggle around and then fall gently to a place that feels good for them. We tend to hike up those shoulders. Beautiful, you guys. Now we're ready, right? <laughs> Just a little centering can make a big difference. Okay, so let's get into it. My friends, you are here in the right place if you feel like you have tried everything and you're still feeling like crap. Or, and or, if you suffer from daily debilitating, bloating, digestive issues, food sensitivities, and food anxiety. Or if you feel like it doesn't matter what the heck you eat anymore, your stomach is just a mess and it is so defeating. And finally, you're in the right place if you feel like you're ready to ditch the overwhelming misinformation and constant stress and learn a system that works for you. Okay, now let me know in the comments, you guys, which of these resonated with you the most. Type in a one, a two, a three, or a four. So one being you've tried everything, two being you're sick of feeling sick, three being you don't know what the heck to eat anymore, and four being you are ready for a sustainable lifelong health plan. Let me see it. Beautiful, you guys. Awesome. Cool. So whatever your motivation is, I want you to know that I've got you. And here's what you're gonna learn by hanging out with me today. First and foremost, we're gonna be talking about why nourishing your gut is essential to optimal health. 
why your gut is the root cause of your bloating, your digestive issues, your skin flare-ups, and your low energy, what causes our digestive health and gut to break down, um, and then we're also going to be breaking down IBS, leaky gut, food sensitivities, and more. And feel free to, you know, pop in all your questions here. And we're also going to be covering my free phase good gut formula so that you can regain your freedom and feel amazing and pain free. Sounds pretty good, huh? <laughs> now, I want to be very clear here. This training is not for you if you are looking for a magic pill gimmick. That is not what I teach. That is not science backed. That is not what we are here to do and to cover today, right? So if we're expecting to take one supplement and everything goes away or whatever that may be, that's not what we're going to be covering today. You are not in the right place. Um, this training is not for you if you're not committed to really doing the work and really, really changing, right? So once again, this is not a simple quick fix magic pill gimmick that we're going, going by here. And then finally, if you want to continue making excuses and living by your own limitations, which I personally did for a very long time until I was ready to really dive in. And um, we have a nice little bonus here. So if you guys stay with me until the end and you decide to go on this good gut transformation journey with me, I'm going to give you the opportunity to get your hands on this special bonus. So I just really added this for everyone that's attending the master classes. Um, that we'll talk a bit more at the end, talk about a bit more at the end of this presentation. Okay, beautiful. So before we really dive in, I want to share a little bit about myself so you kind of know like who the heck I am and what you're working with here. Because um, I know we have some newbies in the community here. So this is me on the left, traveling with my best girlfriends in Sweden, enjoying an afternoon cappuccino. Your girl loves some coffee, let me tell you. Um, and I, I put this picture up here because years ago, I would have had so much anxiety about how I was going to feel that I wouldn't have been able to even enjoy myself on a trip overseas. I would have been paranoid about what to eat and if that would have set off my digestive issues. I would have been fighting through exhaustion and I would have been too consumed with my stomach to even really be present with my friends. Okay, now you may be thinking like, why is Gwyneth Paltrow on your side? <laughs> so... Other than the fact that I do love her cookbooks, they've got some really yummy things in there. Um, in this photo, she's actually standing with Dr. Alejandro Younger, her personal doctor, who is a top functional medicine doctor and the creator of the Clean Program. Dr. Hunger, or Younger excuse me, changed the course of my life and was the first person to introduce me to the concept of gut health back in 2013, changing my life and health forever, opening my eyes to the importance of gut health and showing me it was really the missing key to my own health. Little did I know years later that I would, that my work and my experience would lead me to being a top writer for his blog and his brand, developing everything from health articles to gut healthy recipes. So now he's kind of like a, a second boss to me. Like me, very funny like that sometimes, huh? And then we have this third picture of me on this, on the right. And this was taken of me a bit more recently with a copy of a leading gut health magazine that I was featured in as an interview resource on the topic of the gut brain connection, which we're going to be talking about today. I spent my younger years reading this magazine religiously and scanning all of the issues for the latest in health and wellness. The magazine came to me as a source for their own research, another very full circle moment that I'm pretty proud of. As you can see, this good gut formula changed my health, my life, and my career. A quick recap of my story. Let me tell you, I was not born a gut-loving holistic health coach. Cue the box of Fruit Loops, right? My diet used to consist of cereal, cheese ravioli, Coke Slurpees, King Size Reese's, Slim Jims, the list goes on and on. No one really guided me or taught me how to eat well. I used to suffer from terrible migraines, bloating, eczema, and a lack of self-confidence that literally had me at home hiding, too embarrassed and nervous to go and hang out with my friends. I've been through it all, vegan, master cleanse, zone diet, four-hour body diet, low FODMAP diet, you name it. I grasped onto anything that I thought might help me overcome my physical digestive issues and boost my self-confidence. Nothing worked. Then, years into my health journey and being influenced by many, many food documentaries, I became scared of basically all foods, and I lost a ton of weight, ending up at 115 pounds, and I'm 5'8". I may have gained a modeling career, which is a whole other discussion, but I lost my period for two years. I was suffering from insomnia and I still constantly felt dissatisfied with my body. This food restriction and the high stress was the tipping point for my gut health. It completely broke me. Everything I ate hurt my stomach at this point. It didn't matter how much or what it was. I tried all whole foods. I tried vegan. I tried steaming all my foods. I tried adding digestive herbs. I tried raw. 
nothing was working. I ended up intentionally skipping meals because I couldn't deal with the unmanageable bloating that would come from it. My busy life didn't have time for it. There was a point when I felt like I couldn't even digest water. Yes, water, you guys. <laughs> Doesn't take much to digest that, right? <laughs> so I finally came across Dr. Younger's work about the gut microbiome, that same doctor from the last slide, and it all really clicked. The issue was in my gut. I had completely destroyed my gut health. Then I moved up to New York City and I started working for a company called Sakara Life on their health and wellness team. I started answering people's health questions and guiding them through their own health journeys. While working there, I was able to connect with some of the leaders in functional medicine and holistic health, like Alyssa Vitti, Dr. Robin Burzin, and many more. And I realized that the common thread in their work was indeed the gut microbiome. And that's when I pretty much became obsessed <laughs> and I did my research, right? So I attended the Institute for Integrative Nutrition and I learned from some of the top doctors like Mark Hyman, Andrew Weil, Joel Furman, and Deepak Chopra. I worked for a top functional medicine practice in New York City. I studied under Dr. Pratima Raishore, a leading doctor in Ayurvedic medicine. I dedicated any extra hours to studying the latest in gut health, like full nerd status over here. I love this stuff. Um, I attended discussions and lectures from the leaders in gut health, and I tested and tried different techniques on myself and my clients, really piecing together my three-phase good gut formula that, before I knew it, was helping everyone get better, really regardless of what they were coming in with. Fast forward to today, and I'm really proud and happy to share that I am more comfortable in my body than I ever have been before, completely diet-free, um, bloating, digestive issues, food fear, these things no longer rule my day to day. I know exactly what works and what does not work for my body. I literally love everything that I eat and I have so much energy, um, arguably too much energy, which you can probably tell <laughs> through this screen right now. And the best part about all of this is that I've been able to help women all over the world really break free from their debilitating digestive issues, skin issues, low energy, and food fear, and really flourish. It gives me goosebumps just knowing what is on the other side for all of you. So how many of you guys feel right now like you're currently at war with your body and are ready to live in a body that works with you? Let me know in the chat. I'm so freaking excited, you guys. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Transforming your digestive health and revitalizing your gut means that you no longer fall victim to debilitating digestive issues, low energy, and low self-confidence, but instead you begin to live your life empowered and free. Can I get a heck yes? So now we're going to really jump into all of the good gut knowledge, yeah? So um, get your pens and paper out if you don't have them already. So really like what I want you to know. I wanna make something very clear to every single person on this class right now. Your symptoms that you have are just symptoms. Addressing the symptoms is not going to fix your health issue. Something like peppermint tea will help soothe your bloating initially, but we have to take a look at the why behind the bloating, right? We have to identify the root causes of the bloating. That is what has to be addressed here. And the root cause of these symptoms, like bloating, like acne, eczema, anxiety, low energy, and autoimmune conditions, is indeed a gut health issue. So I always kind of like to talk about um, stepping on a tack, right? When you, when you step on a tack, like a, a thumbtack, you can take an Advil, you can take, um, you know, an ibuprofen, and that pain will kind of start to like windle away. Over time, you may have to take two, you may have to take three, right? You're gonna have to increase your dosage. Um, it may get infected and it may get worse. It may cause other issues, right? Your whole foot may start hurting eventually because the infection will spread because we're not addressing the root cause of the issue. That root cause being that you have a tack stuck in your foot. So what we have to do is we have to remove the tack from your foot and then do the repairing, do the cleaning and let your body really start to do its own self-healing. Does that make sense, you guys? Okay, so let's go through a quick recap of why the gut is so important. I love this. Okay, so the gut is the epicenter of our overall health. When our gut isn't working properly, it affects every single system in our bodies from cardiovascular to immune health. It's been said that up to 90% of all diseases can be traced in some way back to the gut and health of the gut microbiome including things like hormonal imbalances, allergies, autoimmune diseases, um, like rheumatoid arthritis or Hashimoto's thyroiditis, diabetes, liver disease, obesity, chronic fatigue, 
fibromyalgia, anxiety, depression, eczema, rosacea, and more. I always like to go through all of these because it's, it's not always just digestive issues, you know? Now let's talk about the gut brain connection for a second here. The microbiome, the gut microbiome and the gut have a direct communication to the brain via a bi-directional pathway called the gut brain axis. They are in constant communication. This communication mostly originates from the gut microbiome up to the brain via signals from the vagus nerve. We're going to touch a bit more on this later. With about, listen up to this, 400 times the amount of messages coming from the gut microbiome to the brain, then from the brain to the body. That's pretty amazing, right? We are actually getting more information to influence our biology from our gut. Crazy. And about 95% of ser serotonin receptors are found in the gut itself. And serotonin um, helps regulate mood, happiness, anxiety, right? So what does that really mean for you? If your gut is not functioning properly, serotonin isn't going to be manufactured properly. Low levels of the chemical have been associated with things like depression. And did you know that your biggest exposure to the outside world every single day is through your mouth? And that's why 70% of your immune system, they're saying like 70 to 80% now, um, really lives in your gut, right? Waiting to protect you from anything that seems foreign to the body. These are going to be things called antigens because they stimulate the immune system, which believe it or not, includes food and the toxins and microbes that ride along with the food that you ingest while eating. So let's break this down a little bit. The biggest reservoir of the immune system is indeed all along that gut lining. So our gut lining is basically like a border patrol. The immune system is constantly checking what's coming through and is it friend or is it foe? And if anything comes through that is not recognized as friendly, something like a partially digested protein that didn't get broken down completely, maybe due to lack of stomach acid, then the gut is gonna sense kind of like an error message and that's gonna activate the immune system in the gut. And the way that the immune system works is that once you activate one region of the immune system, it's going to send signals that go throughout the entire body and it can activate all parts of the immune system. So AKA, right? Like if something gets through the gut lining that shouldn't in the case of maybe leaky gut, which we'll talk about a bit more, um, an error message is sent. And what that really looks like is inflammation, systemic inflammation. And what does that really mean? Right? So systemic inflammation can also show up as skin rashes, acne, eczema, anxiety, depression, a weak immune system, migraines, right? So once again, I really like to bring this up because it's not all digestive issues. Of course, a large part of it is. And I know a lot of people on this class are struggling with digestive issues, but they're usually coupled with other things, right? We usually also have skin issues or anxiety or um, migraines, or we get sick a lot, right? So all of these things are really, um, really just kind of like together, paired up. Now let's go ahead and talk about leaky gut for a second. Yeah, I love talking about leaky gut. <laughs> okay, so leaky gut happens when the gut lining, which is only a single cell layer thick, begins to leak. So if I had my camera on, you could see me, I'm like holding up my finger, right? So I always say a single cell layer thick that is thinner than your fingernail. So like if this lining, all, as you can tell, this lining is relatively susceptible, right? That's not super thick, right? So um, we all have both beneficial and harmful bacteria in our guts at all times. When our gut flora is in check, we can, we can handle these bad bacteria, right? But when the bad bacteria start to outnumber the good bacteria, irritation and inflammation are going to occur, which could then trigger the tight junctions along the lining of the intestines to then open up and leak. And this is what you can really see in this diagram over to the left here as well, right? So with this, things like toxins, undigested proteins, parasites, um, all sorts of different things that we don't want are going to leak out into the bloodstream and they're going to set off this immune system response, which can then lead to systemic inflammation and a whole host of symptoms that I named in that last slide. So the body doesn't recognize these foreign particles. So therefore it's, it's trying to protect you, right? Since it doesn't recognize these particles, it's going to trigger that immune system response. So your body can fight it. But then if this keeps happening over time and time, right? This is going to build up to become major inflammation. So, you know, inflammation has, is initially good, right? So like when we get a cut, it may get a little, um, blood will usually rush to the cut, right? It's kind of like our body sending its natural healing powers to the cut. But if we are doing that inside of our intestines every single day over and over again, right? Without doing the deep repairing work, 
that's a lot of inflammation that's happening, right? So it's not necessarily this like acute inflammation that happens once when you like scrape your knee, but this really chronic inflammation. Um, so there's, there's, you know, a bit more science at play here, but does this make sense to you guys? Basically, um, this, like, like it shows in this diagram here, we've got things literally slipping through these epithelial cells, um, which, you know, are supposed to be nice, normal type junctions, like in this diagram, but instead things are really slipping through here due to these other things that are causing leaky gut and then leaking out into, um, the bloodstream, which is going to result in things like weakened immune system, inflammation, food sensitivities, which we're going to get into here. And of course, malabsorption and nutrient deficiency, which is also uh, not cool, right? Okay, so um, one more thing that I really want to point out is that uh, we can get microorganisms that shouldn't be on the other side of that gut barrier, right? Uh, yeast, partially digested proteins, um, and proteins are, the, are some of the most potent activators of the immune system. And most importantly, lipopolysaccharide, which is also known as endotoxin, is the most potent stimulator of the immune system, right? So lipopolysaccharide gets into the brain, and then it also activates the microglia. So you get inflammation in the brain and the activation of inflammatory pathways in the hypothalamus of the brain. You don't really need to know what all of these like fancy words mean, except for the fact that gut health, this, this really shows us that the gut is really, truly intricately connected to things like depression and anxiety and brain fog, right? This is why the phrase, what happens in the gut stays in the gut, um, or excuse me, what happens in the gut does not stay in the gut, <laughs> exists, right? So also, I always like to bring, bring this up. So when I found this out, I was like, are you joking? <laughs> Um, the way that, that like pharmaceutical companies actually test the efficacy of antidepressants is by injecting rats with lipopolysaccharides because it causes so much inflammation, right? So if these lipopolysaccharides are seeping through your weak gut lining, this is going to trigger brain issues. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, and then we have, you know, so how do we like know what are some signs of a leaky gut, right? We have things like bloating, food sensitivities, autoimmune diseases, um, all autoimmune disease begins in the gut, you guys, we really have to optimize our gut health in order to put some of these symptoms into remission. Um, things like fatigue, brain fog and depression, IBS, um, diabetes, skin disorders, thyroid disorders, weight loss resistance, right? Um, do any of these symptoms resonate with you guys? I'd love to know in the chat. We're going to be diving into food sensitivities more and IBS a bit more as well. Um, but these can all be signs of a leaky gut. And I'll say, you know, quickly here as well, we don't just get a leaky gut. Usually something is also causing a leaky gut, right? So this is why we need a really thorough program to address all of these things. Okay, so let's kind of talk about food sensitivities a little deeper. Because I know people on this call have many food sensitivities. So I want to make this very, very clear. Um, are you like, you should not be living with what feels like a million food sensitivities, period, the end, right? It does not have to be this way. This is a clear cut sign of gut dysfunction and things like leaky gut, right? We've got a, we've likely got a bacterial imbalance and we very likely have leaky gut as well, uh, along with just like, um, inadequate di digestive function if this is happening for you. So by the time people find me, they have so many free food sensitivities, they don't know what to do. They're eating the same five foods, right? This is, it is not because you are sensitive to all of these foods. It is because your body cannot break these foods down properly and we can actually repair your function. So you can be able to add more foods to your plate and therefore, you know, eat, eat more foods, not be stuck with the same uh, few foods, right? So um, here's the deal, really, like when your gut is compromised, like when you have leaky gut syndrome, foods end up passing through that gut lining and into that bloodstream. This is what we just discussed, right? This can put your immune system in overdrive and lead to this increased inflammation throughout your body. So with this hyper awareness, your immune system ends up reacting to almost any food that passes through it, including healthy foods like spinach or chickpeas or almonds or berries or whatever it may be. And this is when you're going to react poorly to all of these random foods that are likely healthy, right? Or maybe you, you're on this class now and you've gotten a food sensitivity test back and a bunch of random foods have popped up, even the healthy ones, right? And more often than not, they're the foods that you eat a lot of, right? So the answer is not to take these foods out forever and move on. It's actually quite dangerous. What we wanna do is repair your gut function 
overcome the sleepy gut syndrome and then start reintroducing these foods systematically after we've done all the good gut repairing work to then see which ones really tick you off. Um, so once you have really worked on your gut health, you may find that certain problem foods are now tolerable. Um, and all, you know, I like to say as well, like, remember certain foods we kind of know we shouldn't be eating a ton of, right? Like we shouldn't be drinking too much, eating buckets of sugar. We know this, right? But we can usually open our diet up a lot more than we have it right now. Um, so yes, we don't want you tolerating the same 10, tolerating only the same 10 foods. And before I go on, I'll also say like, I've seen this in students, right? So I've seen students literally get a food sensitivity test have it come back with a long list of random foods, foods that she ate all the time, foods that were very healthy, chickpeas, oats, lettuce, right? Go through my program, get the same test done again, sensitive to zero foods, zero. Kind of crazy, right? Because it's not the food itself, it's the gut dysfunction. Okay, I will get off my tangent. I'll get off my soapbox now. So let's talk about IBS a little bit, yeah? Okay, so IBS stands for Irritable Bowel Syndrome. A syndrome is a group of symptoms that usually occur together. Things like cramping, bloating, pain, gas, um, diarrhea, constipation, right? Maybe alternating between the two. That's very common of IBS. But saying that your pain is because of IBS is like saying your bloating, stomach pain, cramping, digestive issues are happening because you have bloating, stomach pain, cramping, and digestive issues. That doesn't make any sense, right? This makes no sense because this is not a root cause. So in order to get IBS, some tests were probably run. Doctors probably found nothing, right? And then they said, you have IBS. But what I would say is, uh, what's causing the IBS? How do we repair the gut function? How do we repair the gut microbiome, right? Because we didn't just pick up IBS out of nowhere, right? I mean, some of us were born maybe with some digestive issues, just like out the gate kind of on a back foot. But for the most part, this developed. So it's not like this, you have IBS, goodbye, that's the end. We can really train your gut and repair your digestive health um, to dish some of these symptoms. Okay, so um, does that resonate with anyone who in here has been diagnosed with IBS after like multiple rounds of testing where the doctors just like couldn't find anything? Let me know in the chat. This is most of my students that come into um, my program and work with me. So maybe you were just sent off with a medication to management or, or better yet, like nothing, right? They were like, looks like everything's okay or you're just gonna have to live with this. Good luck, right? Um, not ideal and kind of unacceptable in my personal opinion. So here's the deal. IBS isn't actually your issue. Remember when I talked about getting to that root cause, you've got to take a look at what's causing these IBS symptoms because you don't just get it out of nowhere. So what we need to be addressing, what it actually is, so you know, you know, what could be causing these issues for you, what we should be addressing so you don't deal with them anymore, is going to be things like food sensitivities or intolerances, right, which could be out of balance due to these other gut issues, right, likely a higher level of food sensitivities due to other issues in the gut, things like gut dysbiosis, which is going to be an imbalance of the bacteria in the gut. Things like SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, or CIFO, small intestinal fungal overgrowth, right? Things like MMC issues, migrating motor complex dysfunction. That migrating motor complex, complex is a nerve regulated, um, it's kind of like a broom. It, it's like a broom sweeping away any like leftover particles that are in your small intestine. Um, and it's nerve regulated and it only happens when, you, when you're in a fasted state for a certain period of time. Some people, maybe when we snack all day, this MMC never really has, a, has the ability to do its thing. Then we get an overgrowth and we get a lot of issues, right? Um, things like intestinal hyperpermeability, aka leaky gut, that's kind of the more te technical term. Leaky gut's a little easier, <laughs> I say. Um, things like gut infections, parasites, bacteria, fungus, yeast, um, altered HPA axis function, which basically means HPA axis is the hyp hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. We're going to stick with HPA. Um, and basically it means like you've been so stressed for so long that your hypothalamus, your brain is not, is not connecting and communicating with your pituitary glands and your adrenals properly because you're just like so burnt out. Um, Oh, and, or it could be things like heavy metal toxicity. Usually we address the rest of the things and that, you know, not everyone is dealing with heavy metal toxicity. That's kind of a more nuanced thing, but I like to add it in there just in case, because it could be, um, altering our ability to detoxify really. Okay. 
So now that we know how important the gut is and all the goodies on IBS and leaky gut and food sensitivities, uh, let's talk about what actually leads to an unhealthy gut and what really causes our digestive function to break down. So um, this is going to be a combination of things really depending on your personal story. So this is where you can start put like piecing together your own personal health history, right? So things like the standard American diet is going to really break down our digestive health. Things like refined carbohydrates, preservatives, sugars, um, fried foods, dietary toxins like industrial seed oils, canola oil, sunflower oil, um, safflower oil, soybean oil, yikes, right? Um, also, what else do we have here? Um, food like substances, packaged foods, right? Then we have things like food allergies and food sensitivities. Um, really, really more so like food intolerances, being intolerant, being intolerant of certain foods and not really knowing it. Um, and then we have things like prescription medications, anti-inflammatory drugs, proton pump inhibitors. So the class earlier this morning, I'll touch on it briefly here, but the class earlier this morning, uh, we talked about PPIs and they were like, what are the long-term, you know, what does it do to you long-term? A proton pump inhibitor is really suppressing stomach acid. Um, here, let me see if I can come back on the, um, back on the screen here to so really talk about this with you guys for a second. Hello. Um, okay. So proton pump inhibitors are really, sorry, don't mind my eye. I've got a little abrasion from my sleep mask. Proton pump inhibitors are going to suppress stomach acid. That's what they do, right? That's what they're prescribed to you to do. When we take these things long-term, first and foremost, they were put on the market for medical doctors to only be prescribed for max six weeks, max six weeks. Has anyone on this masterclass been taking them for longer? Let me know. Um, they suppress stomach acid. Stomach acid is very important. Stomach acid is the first um, chemical barrier that we have. Yes, about two years. Yeah, you're in the you're in my program, so we'll talk about it, right? We'll get you some help. So, stomach acid is very essential. It is going to trigger bile production. Bile is essential for breaking down fats. Stomach acid is the first chemical barrier that we have to um, killing off any pathogens that ride in on the food that we're eating. So, you know, this is why the immune system is outside that gut lining, right? Because we are taking foods, or it's crunchy, um, it, from the outside world, whether they are from, you know, your local farmer market or farmer's market or Walmart, they still have bacteria on them, right? Bacteria is everywhere. We're putting this inside of our body. Stomach acid is going to help kill off any of those path pathogens that are on the things, right? It could be in water. It could be a, in a, really a ton of things, right? If we don't have enough, we are setting a breeding ground for path pathogenic bacteria, really, which is going to cause all these issues, bloating, stomach pain, all the things, right? It also helps us. Um, it's really essential for digesting proteins, right? So if you feel like you can't digest like protein rich meals or you feel really sluggish afterwards or you're burping afterwards, you feel really tired afterwards, that could be another sign that you have low stomach acid. Um, what else? Proton pump inhibitors long-term can lead to B vitamin deficiencies, iron deficiencies, osteoporosis, pneumonia, um, SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, which I mentioned, right? So it's nothing to play with. <laughs> um, so this could, I say this because it could be a piece of your health puzzle. And most people do not have too little stomach acid, too, too much stomach acid. They have too little stomach acid, which um, I think we'll get talking about a little in a little bit. But wanted to hop on and say that. Got to pull back up the slides. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Sorry, guys. I get up on these tangents, but I really got to get, I really got to tell you. Um, okay. So um, then we have things like chronic stress and trauma, right? Stress, stress, when we are in a state of stress, we're going to increase cortisol. Increased cortisol levels literally break apart at that gut lining that I talked about so extensively. Then we have things like excessive sugar intake, excessive alcohol intake. These are, are feed these bad bacteria in our gut. We have things like birth control that are going to slow motility, lead to nutrient deficiencies. Um, they can also contribute to dysbiosis. And then things like infections, right? So this is kind of like we travel, we pick up a parasite from some food, or we travel, we pick up H. pylori in the water or something like that, right? All of these things can really affect our, um, really break down our digestive health. So what the heck do we do, right? <laughs> You're like, Hannah, sounds like me, help me. So this is really where my three phase good gut formula um, comes into play. So if you haven't gotten your notes out yet, get them out now, y'all. <laughs> this is the time. So phase one is going to be to reframe, reorganize, and ready. 
And you guys, this doesn't really have as much to do with like supplements and foods, but this is an essential phase. I have been coaching um, women all over the world for years at this point, And a lot of women skipped this phase. So that's why I was like, I'm making it part of my formula. <laughs> So this is where we really, um, because, it, because these things are so overlooked. So we want to first prep the mental space, right? Our mental space, our limiting beliefs, goals, intentions, and really connect to our why. Because every healing journey is not linear. There will be bumps along the road. And we have to come back to our why to even stay the course, right? I'm sure everyone on this call in this class uh, really knows this. Um, everyone wants to, you know, talks about what to do, but no one talks about the fact that most people aren't able to follow through with what they know they could be doing to help themselves. So this is where we really dive into that um, together collectively, right? So we have a mental body, a physical body, and an emotional body. All of these things impact our overall health, and a health program should consider all three of these things. Yes, there I said it, but I already said it. Just a reminder. <laughs> okay, so one more thing I want to put out there. Um, many of us don't actually need more information. Some of us do, some of us don't, right? We've probably been Googling our lives away, Googling our symptoms away for months, maybe years at this point, seeing tons of people. So we need to actually do something with the information that we have. And what's stopping us may very well be our own self-limiting beliefs. They can show up looking like things like, this won't work for me. I'm too broken. Everyone in my family is sick. I'm destined to be too. This is, a, this is going to be too hard. I'm not disciplined enough to do this. I'm way too busy for this, right? All of these beliefs are circulating in our subconscious brain, and they're quite literally blocking us from healing. Now, I, I kind of want to talk more about that, but I'm just going to move on because <laughs> we have a lot to cover. But um, second... We want to prep the physical space, right? Kitchen clean out, get ready, um, really prepping. And because it's a lot easier to eat supportive foods and to make these adjustments when you actually have the foods in your kitchen, when you don't have these processed foods lying around, when you've created a space that is conducive of transformation and of healing, right? This is really essential. Third, we ease your body into the process just so we don't overwhelm it. Um, so we start with some basic food adjustments and then we move into kind of more of the deeper work because when we move into things too quickly, especially for people that are dealing with gut issues, um, we likely have a buildup of toxins and our liver may be a little overloaded. It may be a little um, kind of worn out. So we want to not overload it too quickly uh, with, by doing too much at once. This is why sometimes you can feel way worse before you feel better, which really should try to be, be avoided if possible. Yeah. So then we have phase number two, which is going to be the core four. This is like the heart of the gut health magic here. So we want to consume very gut specific foods. So we eat multiple times a day, every single day. And over time, this begins to wear on our systems, including our gut, if not done properly. Does the body detoxify constantly? Yes. Can the body handle a lot? Of course. But at a point, which is different for everyone, it hits a wall and it just can't do it anymore. And food is the foundation. We can make a lot of shifts with um, the proper nutrients and the proper foods, right? Because we do this every day, multiple times a day, we eat, right? Every single time we eat, we are either nourishing our bodies with vitamins and nutrients and enzymes and health, or we are feeding disease and triggering inflammation and sparking symptoms. And once again, the body is incredible at self-healing, but um, it's kind of like throwing logs on the fire, right? We want to we wanna stop sparking the fire so the body can actually begin to heal itself. So it's imperative that we are removing these triggering, these common toxic trigger foods so the body can begin the self-healing process. Um, but the second piece to this food puzzle is really... Um, excuse me, there we go. The second piece of this food puzzle is to make sure that we are including the right kinds of foods for the gut microbiome. Um, and I'm not talking about crazy expensive, never heard of before foods here either. I like to keep it sustainable, realistic, delicious, right? You know, so you actually do it. Um, and we have to include these nourishing good gut foods, not only to expedite the repairing process, but also to feed the good bacteria in the gut and get the gut back on your side. So these are going to be things like healthy fats, 
fiber rich foods, right? Powerful herbs and spices, powerful herbs and spices are super underutilized. Um, high quality proteins, right? So I, I want to emphasize this, you guys, because a lot of um, diets out there just focus on really what to take out, right? Things like gluten, things like sugars, things like dairy, whatever it may be, FODMAP foods. But if we're not putting the right foods in, I mean, our gut bacteria feed off of these foods. So if we're dealing with dysbiosis, if we're dealing with a weak gut lining, we literally need these good gut foods to then feed our good bacteria so then our good bacteria can actually produce things called short chain fatty acids, which are, which are anti-inflammatory. They help seal up that gut lining. They help with metabolic health. I mean, it's pretty amazing what food can do, right? So we have to really make sure that we set that um, foundation for ourselves. Now, something I talk about a lot, you guys, is getting the body back on your side. So um, you know those diets that you very likely done um, that leave you really starving and irritable and hangry. And you know how they only last like three days and then you fall off of them because you are indeed star starving, irritable, and hangry. That's because we are not combining the right foods together here. So we have to make sure that we're getting in the right foods to help balance blood sugar levels and turn off hunger hormones. Another reason why I want to emphasize that it's not all about taking out foods. It's also about what foods we are putting in. So let's talk about blood sugar levels for a little second here. I made this diagram myself, very proud. So in order to maintain optimal energy levels, maintain our weight, feel full, ditch anxiety, support our gut health, we have to really support our blood sugar levels. So when they go up really high, which you can see here, this blood sugar spike from these processed carbohydrates, sugary things, caffeine rich things, processed things, right? When they go up really high, our blood sugar spikes, our insulin spikes, and then we get the crash, right? Our blood sugar drastically drops. And then at that low point is where we're gonna get things like sugar and carbohydrate cravings, right? Which then we get those cravings. We're like, hmm, I'm gonna eat something like that. Then we spike that blood sugar up again. And when it spikes high, what does it do? It drops low, right? And then most people just continue all day long making these food decisions harder on themselves, leaving them feeling exhausted and anxious, looking for things like sugar and caffeine and carbohydrates because they are not optimizing their blood sugar curve. So um, this is why you may have felt really like shaky and anxious and starving on things like juice cleanses. This is why you may feel this way on certain diets, right? It takes a specific set of nutrients that are paired efficiently together to optimize this blood sugar curve. And when we optimize this blood sugar curve, y'all, everything gets easier. <laughs> Let me tell you, we no longer have to snack all the time, which does what? Allows for our MMC to do the right work, right? It allows our MMC func to function better, to push through any debris in the small intestine. It allows us to get to the dinner table and to not immediately start palming the bread basket or to open up our fridge after a long day and eat whatever is the first thing that we see in there. Like we've all been there, right? You're like, I don't care what the heck I eat right now. I'm freaking starving and I've had a long day and I'm just going to eat it. Now, like, let me ask you, does, does following any type of program feel sustainable or easy when you're in that mindset, right? You're kind of out of body a little bit. You're not even fully connected and tapped in. We want to avoid feeling that way. And how we do that is by really optimizing the blood sugar curve and turning off certain hunger hormones. So we are then feel in our body, hormone supported, feeling satisfied, feeling grounded and supporting our gut health like with ease, right? So once again, it's not all about taking out certain foods. It's about what we put in. This may also be why you haven't felt results before. So to recap, we want to remove these common toxic trigger foods for a specific uh, period of time because it takes our, our antibodies have a half-life of about 23 days. Um, we like to go a little longer just to make sure all of that good stuff. Um, and then we want to replace them with the right gut supportive foods. Those things that I named before, healthy fats, fiber rich foods, polyphenols are the bomb. Um, what else, you know, healthy, high quality proteins, omega threes, right? The list goes on and on. You cannot do one or the other. You really have to do both here or you're not going to get the full healing effect. So um, I want to tell you about Catherine, who graduated from my Healing Guts and Shaken Butts program. So she put this process into play and she saw major results. When she came to me, she had been struggling with digestive issues for years, never feeling well, never getting any answers, right? Like many of you guys here today. So she even said to me, I thought I was eating really healthy and I didn't understand why I was bloated all of the time. It was so difficult for so long for so many years. I had so many digestive flare-ups and it made me self-conscious. 
It was hard to live my life. I tried everything for so long. She went to doctors that told her she was fine, that she was just stressed out, but she knew there was something going on because you guys, you always know if there's something going on. You know your body better than any anyone. Me, your doctor, anyone, right? You live in it. She saw a doctor. She, saw, she went to a nutritionist. She spent so much money on tests, appointments, and supplements without an actual like real plan. She says, then I found out healing guts and chicken butts and I decided to go for it. When I started the program, I thought, why didn't my doctor tell me this? Why didn't my nutritionist tell me this? And in the first three days, I felt better. It's all so much better now. And you guys, I share her, I share her story because I want you to know that the work works. And I also want you to know that she was where a lot of you are today, right? Felt like she ate healthy, felt like she had done all the things, seen the doctor, seen the nutritionist, thought she was really doomed. And she was like, whatever, I'm just going to go for it. I have nothing to lose. And she literally felt better in the first three days. So please find hope in her story. Okay. So in addition to the like remove and replace aspects of um, the food, we also want to make sure that we're removing any bad bacteria and invaders. Um, we also want to replace and digestive enzymes and stomach acid, right? I touched on that stomach acid piece. Um, digestive enzymes help us break down different foods, right? So we have lactase, uh, we have, um, oh gosh, what's the one for all of the, all of the carbohydrates, beta something, something, it's a long word. <laughs> I won't say it now, I won't butcher it now. Um, lipase helps us digest fats, right? So we have different digestive enzymes that help us break down different foods um, that we naturally should be really producing on our own, but some of us aren't after we've been struggling for a little while. We also want to repopulate the good gut flora. So these gut bacteria help us break down food. They help us produce vitamins. They help us detoxify, right? So, you know, when you, if you have struggled on a low FODMAP diet, um, there's a very high chance that you have an issue. I mean, I would say uh, there's no guarantee, I guess, uh, like whatever, but I would say 99.9% .9 you have a gut bacteria issue because our gut bacteria are what actually break down some of these carbohydrates that are par a part of these higher FODMAP foods, right? So it's not our DNA, it's not our genes that's breaking this down, it's literally our gut bacteria. So we have to make sure that we are repopulating them and feeding them the right foods so they don't just exit the system when we go to the bathroom, right? It's a bit like a, of a system. We also want to repair their gut lining. So I touched on the gut lining a lot earlier, right? All of that leaky gut talk. Um, this is really essential for inflammation, for food sensitivities, for um, feeling good, for energy, all of the things. Um, now I want to share with you Paige's sto page story. So I love Paige's story. Um, she followed this three-phase good gut formula and was able to completely transform her life in a matter of weeks. She went from suffering with, quote unquote, making it through the day, which she told me, uh, with her dreadful Hashimoto symptoms. So she was suffering with Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is an autoimmune condition of the thyroid, um, to feeling healthy, happy, vibrant, and confident in her body every day. She was also dealing with IBS because most people um, have both thyroid and digestive issues, right? These things are very connected. Um, and she really credits this formula to, to all of this good digestive repairing work and to really shifting her life. Pretty freaking cool. Um, man, I will never forget the day when she reached out to me and told me that she had, you know, lost all this weight that was, that was really like a buildup of toxicity. Um, and that she was regaining her energy and no longer was dealing with these IBS symptoms that were like literally running her day to day. Right. Gosh, I shed a tear. I still shed a tear when I get all of my students results. Um, okay. Beautiful. So let's move on to phase three. In phase three, we have relax, reconnect and reintroduce. Take note, these are all R's, so they're easy to remember, you guys. So first and foremost, relax, right? This is where we talk about mental and emotional health and stress management, because your gut can feel your stress even if you can't. So, so many people overlook this cause of bloating and fatigue, you guys, and skin issues. I see it over and over again. Um, it's not all about the food and it's not all about the supplements, right? And here is why. Because of the vagus nerve, which I love talking about. Okay, so let's break this down. Digestion actually begins in the brain, right? So when you walk into your home and maybe your significant other or your whoever it may be is like cooking something up and you smell it and you're like, mm, that smells good. I'm getting a little hungry. It's because digestion really starts in the brain, right? It's also why doing things like cooking our meals and smelling the aromas can help us with better digestion because we're more connected to our food. Our brain has had time to process the fact that we're about to eat, right? 
So the vagus nerve is really the the reason for this. So it's part of the rest and digest system of the nervous system that conserves energy as it slows the heart rate, increases intestinal and gland activity, and relaxes sphincter muscles in the GI tract. It's literally called the rest and digest system. So while you might dismiss how mental stress directly impacts your gut, know that the vagus nerve literally connects the two. And this is often why your gut is called your second brain. So buying a kit of supplements will never replace stress management. I, if, it, if it could, I would have done that a lot, many, many years ago, you guys. So if you don't address your stress effectively, you won't be seeing the results that you are hoping for. And by really toning this vagus nerve through targeted exercises, we can increase the gut-brain connection and really reignite our body's ability, own ability to naturally digest our food well. So you can see in this diagram that I have on the screen um, that quite literally, as I mentioned, this vagus nerve is going to have some control over gastric acid secretion, aka the amount of stomach acid that we produce when we eat, digestive enzyme secretion, do we have enough enzymes to break down this food? This is essential. These one, one or two of these alone could be causing your digestive issues, gastric capacity, how much our, our stomach can hold, and our blood glucose, our blood sugar, going back to that diagram that I had on the last, um, on a few, a few slides ago, right? So this is very, very, very important. Now, please do not overlook the stress connection. So let's get really practical here, right? If you are in a constant state of stress due to environmental factors, a stressful job, childhood trauma, inflammatory foods, too much exercise, then your vagus nerve is not being triggered properly. Your brain is taking situations in as stressful and you are quite literally suffering the consequences of the stress in your gut because of the gut brain connection and the communication that's going on here. This then turns off your rest and digest nervous system and your body cannot concentrate on properly digesting food. Does that make sense to you guys? It's pretty cool, right? A lot of us just want to like shove stress to the side, but it does not work that way, you guys. This was a big learning lesson for me. Um, this is something I, I really had to take seriously, and I did it for years, and it made a very large difference. So uh, we need to be in that parasympathetic, aka that relaxed state, um, so we can actually digest our foods and so we can heal you guys. We cannot heal in a state of stress. Our body cannot repair. Um, but if we're, if we aren't in this, uh, if we aren't in this parasympathetic state and we're in the sympathetic state, then our digestive juices are essentially like freezing up, meaning our food doesn't get broken down effectively. Uh, we can't get rid of invaders, like things like unwanted bacteria or toxins, right? Because it's going to decrease the amount of stomach acid and digestive enzymes. And really over time, this can result in chronic inflammation, food intolerances, bloating, acid reflux, IBS, IBD, bacterial and fungal overgrowth, hormone issues, thyroid imbalances, right? These are just a few examples, but it's pretty freaking important, which is why I include it in my formula. So I really, really hope that you let that sink in for a moment. Um, it takes a holistic approach to truly and sustainably heal the gut. It is not just the food, although this can make a really huge difference for a lot of people. And it's not just the supplements, which can be very helpful and give necessary support to the body while we are recovering, while we need some extra like healing power. But it also does require some lifestyle shifts, right? The right movement, um, proper sleep, which will come with a more even blood sugar curve, um, stress management, and more. So now can you kind of see how these past diets that you may have tried, whether low FODMAP or paleo, or just even adding in probiotics, these things just simply weren't enough. We've got a lot of pieces to this puzzle, right? Which is also why when people are like, tell me how to do this in two seconds, I'm like, girl, I need like five hours to teach you all this stuff. Okay. So the other R that I want to talk about here is reconnect. So we want to reconnect to mindful, intuitive movement um, and reconnect to how your body really wants to move, not how you've been told to move, not how you think you should, you should move to look a certain way, but how you actually want to move. Remember that gut brain connection, right? Emotion influences our digestion and vice versa. And emotion is energy stuck in motion. It must be expressed, moved through and transformed, or it literally gets stuck. So if you're struggling with something like constipation, unexpressed emotion bottled up inside could likely be influencing this, right? I'm not going to tell you this is the only cause. There's probably other things going on, but this could very likely influence this. 
So mindful intuitive movement really grants us the opportunity to quite literally shift the emotion and transform the energy before it gets stuck in the body um, and causes issues. So I would love to know you guys, like what types of movement are your favorite? What makes you feel good and connected into your body and like in your body, right? So um, for me, I would say it's really dance. <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram, you know I'm always dancing. Dance makes me feel really confident in, in my body. Um, it can quite literally transform my mood. Same with walking. I'm a huge fan of walking. Um, I love movement in all shapes and forms. I, I swear it has saved my life in many ways. <laughs> also yoga, all of those good things. Um, so I also want to touch on a more, the more like physical aspects of this, right? So if you don't move, you will be constipated. So if you're chronically constipated, then you will cause an overgrowth of bacteria in the upper gut that could be the root cause of all of these digestive issues. So this doesn't mean to go ahead and enroll yourself in like CrossFit and boot camp classes, right? In fact, um, too much hardcore exercise can actually cause further stress on your body and your gut, leaving less power and energy to work on your digestive function. Because uh, the body's too busy trying to like reach equilibrium again and repair those torn muscles, right? Because that's what we do every time we exercise. We will literally create muscle tears. And then the body has to repair those. And that's how you get stronger. That's how you build more muscle. But if you're doing that every single day and you also have a gut issue, like your body doesn't have enough power to also send that to your gut lining, right? It's working on your muscles. Um, so we talk about, you know, mindful intuitive movement here. Um, that feels good. This is really critical to avoid constipation, to avoid bacterial overgrowth. And some studies have shown that exercise really, exercise when done at a good rate, um, really actually increases bacterial diversity, which then helps every single thing that we've talked about. So I am saying it, you guys, <laughs> you have to ditch this piecemeal strategy. You have to ditch the, the food trends and the diets and all of that stuff, right? Throwing random things at the problem, things like probiotics or gluten-free diets and hoping it takes care of your issue is wasting your precious time and delaying your progress and adding to your stress, right? It leaves you feeling lack of hope. It leaves you feeling scared. It leaves you feeling like you've tried everything. It could make you feel even worse, right? We've got to really take a more thorough, comprehensive approach to all of this. And then finally, that last R we're going to talk about is reintroduce. So eventually over time, we can begin to reintroduce foods one by one to see which foods work with your body and which do not. We can tap into intuitive eating here and learn to listen to your body since we are no longer fighting it, right? Um, we also get to expand our plates here. So your gut is really like a muscle. It can be trained to handle certain foods. Um, and it can be repaired and it can be transformed, right? So after we've done some of this good work, um, slowly, incrementally, whatever pace feels, feels right for you, we can actually start to reintroduce some foods to see how the body really reacts. And that's where we get some good food freedom. I I'm a walking example of this. I can handle so many more foods than I could years ago. Okay, so I want to tell you about one of my past students, Emily, as well. So when Emily came to me, she was suffering with daily stomach pain and discomfort, extreme fatigue, and breathing difficulties. She actually traveled with a heating pad everywhere um, to help ease her stomach pains. She looked healthy and vibrant on the outside, but inside she was feeling the exact opposite. It took her only a few short days to feel the effects of this three-phase program. And this helped her really overcome her digestive issues. She said goodbye to the breathing difficulties. And you guessed it, she no longer relies on this heating pad. She also, like when I first spoke to Emily, she was taking naps at noon every single day because she could not make it through the day. She does not do this anymore. And she's a very high energy person, let me tell you. Um, so her, her actual like life changed. Um, and I really love sharing her story as well, because it wasn't just about the symptoms to her. Um, she was kind of just like, you know, gritting her teeth and bearing it through these horrible digestive symptoms with her heating pad and things like that. Um, but it was about the freedom that she felt like she no longer had. She couldn't make it through the day. She was too exhausted to get through the day, to explore, to be active. She had totally stopped exercising because she didn't have the energy for it. Um, and these were some of her favorite things. Um, and she had to keep up with the heating pad with her, with, with her at all times as her security blanket. So for when her health really acted up, right? So with this, with this formula, she got her power back. She got her freedom back, right? And she actually like took off on a one month backpacking trip to Asia, like shortly after the program, because she was like, I can do anything at this point, right? So that she got to live her life again. 
So would you like me to teach you exactly how to transform your digestion, restore your gut and get your life back? Give me a heck yes in the chat if you are in. All right, my dears, let's talk about why you're here. Yeah, you're here because you're unhappy. Your digestive issues are ruling your life and they're sucking away your joy, right? Oftentimes it's like way more than the physical symptoms. You've tried everything. You feel like you've tried everything and you are still feeling like crap. You are fed up. You are over the bloating, the stomach pain, the low energy that leaves you hiding at home and totally rearranging your schedule if you're anything like me. I had to cancel things all the time. And you're overwhelmed, right? You're ready to fully commit to taking your health back, but you're overwhelmed by all of the information out there, right? We got probiotics, we got low FODMAP, we got, you know, fruit only, we got all the things. Um, and the fact that you've already tried a million things with no results, like you're feeling overwhelmed. So at this point, the way that I see it, you have two options. Option one being you make no real plan. You continue suffering, living in discomfort and feeling overwhelmed, watching your health issues get worse. Or option two, you 100% commit to take back your health now using a proven step-by-step -step formula that works. So my dears, I am so freaking excited to announce that the Doors to Healing Guts and Shaking Butts, my signature online program that walks you through my step-by-step -step formula to ditching your digestive issues for good are open. And I would like to invite you inside if you are ready to commit to take back your health once and for all. Healing Guts and Shaken Butts is the only health program of its kind that shows you exactly how to transform your gut health and ditch never ending symptoms with ease, fun, and sustainability. So let me tell you a little bit about what you get on the inside, yeah? So by the end of the program, you will have completely revolutionized your kitchen for optimal gut health. You will have transformed your digestive health through a scientific process that yields serious results, taming the disturbances, repairing the gut lining, repopulating that good gut flora, and strengthening the gut-brain connection. You will have ditched the bloating, the digestive distress, low energy, and skin issues that you've been struggling with for years. You also will have gotten rid of sugar cravings and really reset your taste buds. You will have developed a strong stress management routine that can help keep you resilient and calm, right? So you guys, like stress isn't just leaving us. Stress, stressors will always be there. Life continues to throw us curveballs. <laughs> Hello, 2020. So it's really about like building the tools to support yourself during these moments. You will have stepped off the diet roller coaster for good, learned exactly which foods work for your unique body, not the Instagram influencers, not the YouTube channel, not your doctors, but your body. And you will have regained your freedom so you can live the life that you desire. So let me walk you through the eight modules like really quickly. So we have quite literally this formula within the program. So we've got phase one, which is reframe, reorganize, and ready. This is where we take a personal evaluation so you can see how far you have come by the end of it, which is very exciting. And take a look at like what you've been dealing with and where you are right now. We go into goal setting, identifying um, self-limiting beliefs that may be running in your subconscious brain, really influencing how you show up and how you heal. Um, and we'll cover some gut health 101 because hello, I love it. Um, then we have making this program yours so you can really kind of customize this program to exactly what you have going on. We've got kitchen cleanout guides, kitchen tool guides, all the things. Um, we also talk about potential testing that may be really beneficial for you if you decide to go that route and what these tests do. And I know a lot of people on this call have probably felt like they've gotten a lot of testing, which um, if someone can remind me to talk about that <laughs> in the Q&A, I will, right? So I'll talk about that in the Q&A. Um, we also have shifting your microbiome in three days. So we start out with things with my three-day gut reset. Our gut can literally be influenced in a matter of 24 hours. Um, that doesn't mean that everything goes away in 24 hours, right? But we can help by the foods we eat and the, and the lifestyle factors that we bring into place, we can quite literally start to mold our gut microbiome in our favor in a few short days. Then we have phase two. This is going to be the core four. This is really where we dive in for 30 days. We bring into play the remove, replace, repair, and rebalance, right? Then we go into phase three. This is where we look at those good gut, gut lifestyle factors, stress management, mindful, intuitive movement techniques, joy-filled practices. We identify exactly what's working for you with this reintroduction phase, and we get into tips and tricks for really continuing your success um, after the program as well. So I really try to cover some really comprehensive and thorough ground with you all during this program. So by following Healing Guts and Shaking Butts, um, beautiful Jillian here, 
overcame her food allergies, bloating, skin rashes, and insomnia. And she made a big stride in her mental health issues. So she slept for six hours straight for the first time in a decade. She says, it totally changed my life for the better. It gave me the opportunity to take my power back and to take control of my life. This is not just another diet. This is an education. And I will never forget <laughs> when Jillian told me that she had slept through the night, right? She had been sleeping for like, um, I think she said three hours on and off for years with help from sleep medications. Um, for, for years, right? So when she went on this program, she was astounded by the fact that she could actually sleep through the night. Um, she also had a lot of skin issues that we saw immense progress in. Once again, like food sensitivities, bloating, all of that good stuff. It was really fun to work with her. Okay, that is not all though, because I get very excited <laughs> to welcome new people into Healing Guts and Shaking Butts. So I've got some really special um, bonuses for everyone on this class today as well. So I know that we need all the support that we can get right now with everything going on in the world. And I wanna make sure that you feel really well supported and guided throughout this process and that you get the best results, right? So in addition to the complete Healing Guts and Shaken Butts program and the private uh, Healing Guts and Shaken Butts Facebook group where you can talk to me, you can talk to others in the group, hold each other accountable, ask questions, all of that good stuff. You're also gonna get um, a bonus of four group coaching sessions with me within the group. This is, you know, I, I just started offering this. Um, so this is really, really exciting. I want to, I want to just provide you guys with as much support as possible here. My dears, I really want you to know as well that if I can do it, so can you. Not only did I not grow up eating this way at all, um, or have any education around anything like this, remember the Slim Jims and the Slurpees, uh, but I also don't have access to a private chef. I do not have access to an empty schedule. Um, I don't just have great genes, right? I just have a proven science-backed formula that really works. This is a replicable system that you can apply as proven by my students. It is not a theory. It's not just a random diet, right? It's a proven step-by-step -step process that really works. So in addition to the complete Healing Guts and Shaken Butts program and the private Facebook group and the four group coaching sessions with moi, you're also going to get two live Q&A sessions with me for troubleshooting and clarity, right? So I know some questions can pop up during this um, and I want you to feel guided and supported because I know a lot of everyone here, I'm sure a lot of your experiences have been going into a fluorescent lit, lit office, uh, being told you have one thing or been, being told that you have nothing, right? Then you leave, maybe with a piece of paper, maybe with a prescription, and you don't really hear anything for weeks. You don't really have another checkup for maybe a few months, and you're kind of like left alone to just like implement without asking questions or guidance or support, right? Um, that is not how we do things around here. <laughs> And I really want you to feel um, really good about this decision if you do decide to show up for yourself and join us here. So with that, feel better in as little as 14 days or your money back. And I really stand behind this program with every single cell in my body. I have put all of my education into this program and I've watched it transform people's lives right before my eyes. So with that being said, I'm here to help you feel better, right? Like that is my purpose. If you do the work in this program and you prove to me that you have implemented this work and feel like you've made no progress in 14 days, I'll happily give you a 100% refund. Now, the most exciting bonus that I am that I am like pumped to offer all of you today is the bonus of a live Q&A session with Dr. Saima Bhatti. So Saima is the bomb, if I can just put it in layman's terms. Um, she is awesome. Her level of expertise is astounding. She is such a freaking healer and she is in this for the right reasons. And that is why I added her to my team. So let me kind of introduce her a little better here. Okay. So Dr. Saima Bhatti is hands practicing physician, and she's going to be conducting a Q&A inside of the group to answer all of your outstanding questions and add her additional layer of expertise, right? So I want you guys to feel like you've got a team helping you. You're not just out there on, all alone. You're not just Googling your symptoms away at midnight when you're having a flare up and you're scared, right? Like we are over that. We are here to support you and we're here to guide you and we're here to legitimately get you some answers. And Dr. Saima is a licensed acupuncturist and a diplomat of oriental medicine with the highest level of board certification granted by the National Certification Commission of Acupuncture and Oriental Medicine. Basically, 
Uh, she knows what she's talking about. <laughs> she's very smart and she's wonderful. Um, and she's also offering all Healing Guts and Shaping Butt students access to high-end testing, analysis, and customized protocols if desired. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about the testing when we get into the Q&A session as well, because I know a lot of people here have probably gotten a lot of testing, right? So the testing that we offer is very different to other testing that you have likely had run by your like regular physician. It's actually going to give you some answers, <laughs> which is nice. Um, and some extra bonuses just because things are a little intense right now. Um, so we have our fourth bonus here being the seven day good gut meal plan. So I am really not a huge fan of meal plans because I don't think it really empowers you with the education that you need to, um, live your life after you finish the meal plan. So I give, I give a lot of outlines and structures in this program. Um, but with that being said, I also know that some people, you know, this is new to you. You want to make sure you're doing it right. You don't know what the heck is going on or whatever it may be. It may just feel like an extra layer of support for you. So this is why I put together a seven day good gut meal plan for you. Um, so you can have an idea of how to, you know, how to put these things together and then open it up when you're feeling a bit more comfortable. Then we also have bonus number five, which is our guide to intermittent fasting for gut health. So uh, to touch on this quickly, intermittent fasting is very popular. It can be helpful. It can be not so helpful, right? It really depends. Um, there has been some evidence to show that it can be beneficial for gut health. Um, giving your gut an extra little rest can be beneficial, but it's for it's good for certain people and it's not for others. And I'm a big fan of doing it a certain way. So I kind of break down all of that in this, in this guide to intermittent fasting for gut health. Um, because I see a lot of people, a lot of women that have jumped on the intermittent fasting train and it's actually really wiped them out adrenally, hormonally, all of that stuff. So we kind of want to be, um, do it a certain way really. So in total, we have the complete Healing Guts and Shaking Butts program and the Facebook support group. We have the first bonus of four group coaching sessions with me. You also get um, two live Q&A sessions with me for troubleshooting and clarity. We also have that third bonus, which is a live Q&A with Dr. Saima. That bonus number four is the seven day good gut meal plan. And then bonus number five is going to be that guide to intermittent fasting for gut health. And you guys, this comes to a total value of $5,675. So you're probably like thinking, how much is this going to cost me, right? You could spend more time going in to see your current practitioners and getting zero answers. This is going to cost you a lot of time and a lot of pain. You could also spend thousands on testing and random supplements, hoping that they work. Maybe things that are sold on the internet, like at-home tests that don't really give accurate answers. <laughs> Who's done them? Um, and this is also going to cost you a lot of pain and a lot of money, right? And you could also, you know, the average functional medicine doctor is going to cost you anywhere from, I would say, 3000 to 5000 maybe 2000 something like that. I'm not saying that I'm a substitute for a doctor. I am not a doctor and I don't uh, play one on TV, but I do have a practicing physician on my team that offers a much lower cost um, for the analysis of the test and the protocol based on exactly what comes up for you if you choose to do that. A lot of, a lot of students get results without doing that. So um, what are you going to be paying? I want, what I want to ask you is what are you going to be paying to continue to try figuring this out all on your own, really? I spent thousands of dollars. It kind of frustrates me now. Um, and probably definitely thousands of hours crying, in pain, researching, analyzing, trying to figure it out. It was a mess. So you're now, by now you're probably thinking, like, give us the price already. So um, the truth is, I could charge a very high price point for this, right? And because it's that good, because the results that people have gotten are that good, because of the amount of education that have gone into it, and because of the results that you can create for yourself, they're huge, right? So when I told my peers in the industry about my new program, um, hands down, they said all that, that I needed to charge at least $1,997. Um, however, I want to make this program as accessible as possible for you. So what I did is I cut this down to less than a fourth of that because I want this program. I want you to, I want you to get better. I want you to be able to jump into this program, right? So I want you to be able to enroll today, jump in and start feeling better. Um, and that's why I decided to price it at this price point. And this is the exclusive insider rate for everyone on this masterclass right now, right? So if you are ready to get started, you've got some options here, you guys. To make things incredibly easy for you, I have a payment plan. You can get started for just $165 today with the additional payments every 30 days after that. 
or you can make it super easy and just go ahead and pay the one payment of $4.95. All you need to do is go to go.hannahilward.com forward slash yes, and you'll get all of the details. You can enroll right away. And that's once again, go.hannahilward.com forward slash yes. And Teresa's going to go ahead and put that URL in the comment section for us now. Um, so you can literally just go ahead and copy and paste it into your browser. And I mentioned a special bonus at the beginning of our masterclass. So I am offering this insider rate of $4.95 or the three payments of $165 for the next 48 hours. You guys are getting first access to this. After that, it's going to go back up to the normal rate of $5.95. So this is once again available for um, these first 48 hours for all of you early birds that decide to jump on in and start feeling better ASAP. Once again, if you're ready to enroll, all you need to do is go to go.hannahilward.com forward slash yes to get going today. And after you guys go ahead and do that, I just want to run through this really quickly so you know what you're dealing with. This is what it's going to look like. So you're going to get this quick review um, of the, de the details, right? You're going to click on this button right here that says sign me up now. You can choose which option is best for you, the 165 or the 495. And then you can go ahead and just quickly fill in your details here. It probably takes like two minutes max. Um, and make sure to select the, the payment the way that you want to make your payment, right? Because um, it'll automatically choose one. So make sure you select it there. Then you're going to be brought to this page that talks about specific lab testing, right? These are the lab tests that we have made available for you. Um, if you'd like to get more specific information about your case. So these are our, our favorite tests for identifying these gut health issues. Um, things like the comprehensive stool analysis test, the hair tissue mineral analysis test. Um, you're going to see we laid it really all out for you here as well. And for like what this does, what this test does, who needs it, the benefits of it, all of that good stuff. Um, so this is totally optional. It can be really helpful for certain people. A lot of people get results without it. It really depends. Um, and after that, we're going to get to that confirmation page. And this is when you know that you are in. Then you can just go check your email. The subject line is going to be welcome to healing guts and shaking butts. This is where you're going to get your link to access the membership portal um, and create your login information. And this is what it's going to look like. You just go ahead and log into the course and then you'll get access to this members area. So this is where the whole course, the whole program is really going to be, um, is really contained where you're going to get all, all the juicy goods, right? So this is the members area. You're going to get immediate access to the hand cookbook um, and immediate access to sign up for your full script account. Full script is an online physician grade supplement dispensary. We have very specific recommendations that go hand in hand with this program. These supplements are not available um, to like the average consumer. They are physician grade. Uh, because the supplement industry is not regulated, you guys, so we really have to make sure that we are getting high quality, effective supplements and not wasting our money at things on things at Whole Foods. No shade to Whole Foods. I shop there. I love it. But we use the right stuff. <laughs> okay. So once again, if you're ready to enroll, all you need to do is go to go.hannahilward.com forward slash yes to get you going and to join in on the party. Okay, so we're about to transition to the Q&A, which I'm very excited for. Uh, but before we do, I want to answer some self-limiting thoughts that I think might be coming up for you right now, because I have been in your shoes. <laughs> so um, you may be thinking, I just don't have the time for this, right? And you are right. Like, this will take some time. It's not going to take a, a ton of time, but it'll take some time. Um, but this is why the why part of the program includes a very specific and targeted and effective breakfast that takes literally five minutes to make and really combines like everything that I've talked about in this three phase formula. Um, five minutes, right? So you have five minutes. And if you do not have five minutes, we really need to do a time audit of where you are spending your time. I also have my guide to easy meal prep that gives you all the tools you need to make healthy eating um, and like as streamlined and as easy as possible. Students save on average like three to five hours using this guide. I also have the hand cookbook, which is full of amazing, like relatively quick and easy, delicious recipes. Um, but I also want to call everyone out here for just a little second um, because I want to ask like the better question here. And it's the que that question is how much time have you already wasted in pain, in suffering, in discomfort and panic, right? Can you imagine how much time would be freed up if you just had a step-by-step -step actionable plan to follow to get you to this finish line? No more random Google searches, no more panic, no more hours spent reading every health book that comes out, right? It's all here in this program for you. 
And if I can make time for this as a busy solopreneur with a schedule full of clients and stacks of meetings, then I assure you, you can too. Now you may be thinking, but Hannah, like I've tried everything. I've seen all the people, I've purchased all the supplements, I've done all the programs, right? Um, and I know that you feel like you have tried everything. This is also where I was. And I know how freaking defeating this really feels, right? Um, it's painful, it's defeating, it's overwhelming, and it's hopeless. And I know what it's like to bounce from um, diet to diet, trying different approaches, desperately searching for anything to help to lift yourself out of such cons consistent discomfort, because I've been there. And I want to remind you that I have worked with a ton of people uh, that feel that exact same way, right? They feel the same way that you're feeling right now. They've gone gluten-free, they've done the probiotics, they've tried keto, whatever it is, right? Celery juice. Um, but that's how Catherine felt. That's how these other students that I've shared with you felt. And I want to introduce you to Kelsey. So Kelsey had been suffering with severe life-altering digestive issues that dictated her day-to-day. She was having to leave workout classes with her friends early to go home. She was tossing and turning at night. Um, we all know what that feels like, not being able to sleep. It's literally the worst. Hannah is not a happy Hannah. She doesn't get her sleep. Um, and she had seen four gastroenterologists in her hometown with her complaints. Their response, there's nothing wrong with you. We can't find anything, right? Who can resonate with this? Clearly, Kelsey, knowing her own body very well, knew something was up. Kelsey came to me and we started her on this good gut formula and two days in, she didn't have a single symptom. This was after months of suffering, you guys. It took only two days of gut healthy living and she was hooked. She's able to go eat out with friends again. She doesn't have to leave workout classes early. She has no mood dictating bloating, no severe stomach pains, right? Um, this, and please, I want to be very clear on this. This doesn't mean that every single person is going to have no symptoms in two days. Every single one of you is starting from a different start point. For me to say two days and it's gone would be uh, really out of integrity, right? But this is her true story. And this is honestly the story of a lot of other women that have done this program. So I say this because there is hope. And she also felt like she was at the end of her rope, right? Um, you may be thinking, do I have to eat food that tastes like crap? <laughs> the quick answer is no, heck no. Um, you're talking to a girl that loves chocolate and loves to eat and loves her food. Um, and this is why we have the hand cookbook really and other resources as well, because this contains over 50 gut healthy recipes, scientifically um, really created to nourish good gut health, including things like soups and smoothies and desserts and brownies and pancakes and pad thai and flatbreads and the list goes on and on. Um, and here are a few kind of comments that people made um, from the cookbook. So everything is amazing. I never knew that delicious smoothies existed, right? Um, this pad thai is fire. Yes, thank you. I freaking love this pad thai. It's a really great dinner party meal as well. And also the sauce is amazing. I could look it off of my hands, which I would like to say is how people feel about love. The sauce is in there because we love a good sauce. Um, okay, you guys. So this is the link. Once again, it should be in the comments for you if you're ready to get going today. And if you're still on this masterclass call, chances are you really need help overcoming these debilitating symptoms, right? You are on this call for a reason. You've called this training into your life um, and you have decided to show up because you need help. And I'm really proud of you for showing up to this training. And I want you to take a moment and get really honest with yourself. I want you to tune in, take a moment to close your eyes, I'm, I'm very serious <laughs> and tap into what your life looks like in two months, in three months, in six months from now, if you don't fix the root cause of these issues that you are experiencing, what does your life look like? How do you feel about yourself and your body? Um, how can you show up for your family? What do your days look like? How are you able to show up for your loved ones, right? Are you still feeling overwhelmed and defeated, still bloated and exhausted and inflamed? Still beating yourself up for your choices and hiding at home, afraid of being seen. And just straight up, like, is this the life that you want to live? I want you to get really honest here. Because we especially, um, I know a lot of us, I'll just say that, a lot of us tend to kind of downplay our own issues and, and shove our own self-care under the rug, right? We don't make the time for ourselves. Other people come first. And then before we know it, we open our eyes and we've been dealing with these digestive issues for five years, right? This is once again, a thing that a lot of my students kind of come across. So I really want to make sure I like, don't let the fear of failing before you have even started, keep you from starting. My dears, this work literally gives me goosebumps. 
knowing what is on the other side for all of you brings tears to my eyes um because we are we're good if we're getting like really real here it's not because and which i really can't help but do <laughs> if you follow me you know um but this program goes way beyond your symptoms right it reaches into every single area of your life, your relationships, your career, your hobbies, your happiness. When you feel confident and healthy and energized in your body, what you are able to accomplish, the love that you are able to show up with, the goals that you are able to hit are unimaginable. You are capable of so much and you are here on this earth for a very sacred and specific reason. And you cannot live out this purpose if you are hiding and living in pain and wasting hours and hours trying to figure out these symptoms on your own. I spent so much of my life doing this and I'm here doing this work, teaching this work so that you do not have to. All right. So you guys, thank you so much for joining me. Let's jump on in to the um, Q and A. Oops. Um, now I'm going to come off the screen. That was just another client story. <laughs> um, we have lots of client success stories if you want to hear them. Okay. Um, let's see. Stop screen share. Start the video. Awesome, you guys. Um, beautiful. Oh, I'm seeing it. As soon as I come on, Janice has created my 2021 vision board and overall health is my primary focus. Yes. <laughs> that makes me very happy and excited. Okay. Let's get to some uh, questions. Yeah. Throw them in the comments. Actually, Teresa's already doing it. Um, okay. Awesome. Let me start reading some of these. Um, thank you guys for spending your evening with me or your afternoon or wherever you are. It means a lot to me. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, whoa, this light is so bright in my eyes. Um, hold on, sorry, I can't read these. I'm coming, I'm getting there. This is amazing. Um, okay, from Claire, I'm so scared to eat anything because of all the limited diets I have tried research and have been told to do. Eat avocado, it's a healthy fat, but not more than two tablespoons avocado, or is it high FODMAP? Where to begin? Oh, girl. Uh, this I feel the pain for you. I feel the pain for you. Avocado is great. Um, yeah. So like I said, like you guys, there's, there is, I've, we've been on this, like this, we've already been in here for an hour and a half. Um, I couldn't possibly teach you everything that's in this program in an hour and a half because it would take, you know, it just takes longer. So one of the things that I like to touch on a bit more, which I'll do now is the low FODMAP diet, right? So I think I touched on it briefly, but I'll, I'll cover it again. So when you, when you are not tolerating FODMAPs, this is a sign of gut dysfunction, right? This is not a sign, this is not, I mean, this doesn't mean you should take these foods out forever. Um, low FODMAP diet, if you don't follow me on Instagram, you should because I talk a lot about this. It can be one of the biggest mistakes that people make in their gut health journey. And it was really brought to market to decrease symptoms, not address the root cause, to decrease symptoms so you feel a bit more comfortable in your body, right? Um, while you address the root cause, which a lot of doctors and practitioners uh, regret to inform the patient of, and um, it was it was meant to be not be done longer than six weeks, right? Like the PPIs. So because it can really drastically reduce bacterial diversity, and the number one indicator of a healthy gut is going to be um, plant diversity because plant diversity offers more diversity to our gut microbes. These gut microbes, like I mentioned, help us detoxify and help produce uh, certain hormones, right? We have our estrobilone, which is literally its own um, kind of like uh, host, its own group community of um, hormones that are literally connected with the gut microbiome, right? Um, this is how we produce B vitamins, how we break down some of these foods, right? So the low FODMAP diet, while it, it'll also drive you insane, <laughs> in my opinion, um, you know, it's, it's scary, you're fearing it, the whole thing, right? Um, so, but it's really not cool to be on it for long term because you so drastically reduce bacterial diversity and it can really lead, lead to, um, a lot of nutrient deficiencies actually. So, uh, we take a different approach in my program. What we want to do is we want to repair your own digestive function, right? And you can train the gut and you can transform the gut and you can repair the gut, right? So we... We, while, you know, limiting some FODMAP foods may be helpful for you during a part of the process, we have to address all of the other steps that I talked about. We have to talk about stomach acid, digestive enzymes, gut lining, gut function, bile production, liver health, um, nervous system resilience, right? So it's kind of, it just takes more. <laughs> Um, but I'm sorry that it's really overwhelming and you don't know where to begin. That's, that's also why I created this program. Like piecing all this together on your own is a freaking nightmare, you guys. 
don't waste your time. Like, honestly, don't waste your time trying to figure it out on your own when you can get help um, that's more thorough. It's not worth your pain. Um, Jana says, how long have you been running this program? I've been running this program. Oh, that's a very good question. Um, since 2019, I think. I think since 2019. Yeah. About how many people have you helped? Um, she says, by the way, I'm so in. Yes, girl. I like love this vision board. I still need to make my vision board. Who wants to make vision boards after class? Um, so how many people have I helped? That's a, that's a good question. I mean, I have, I, so I started with private clients. Um, and then I really built out the program, right? So this program wasn't, didn't just come out of like thin air, right? Like I was seeing things work. I was continuing my education, things like that. I brought on a practicing physician. I brought in testing. I brought in practitioner grade supplements. I developed the cookbook. So it's a bit of a thing, but I would say I've, I've helped probably close to a hundred people with this at this point with hopes to help um, a million people, like for real, that's the goal. So spread the word um, because, because people aren't getting the help. Like that's just straight up. Like they're not getting the help. So I am dedicated. Um, Nicole, how long does the program last? Oh, great question. So um, there is a group start date of January 25th. You're going to get immediate access when you sign up to like the cookbook and the full script account and your portal and all that good stuff. But I kind of paced the program out a little bit. So we're all doing it collectively. So you get access to more information each and every week. Um, so the program lasts six weeks with the core of it being those 30 days. But like I have said before, um, many people continue on, right? And you're going to get some support in the Facebook group for um, eight weeks, not just six weeks, right? We have the coaching sessions, the Q&As, the Q&A with Dr. Saima, all of that good stuff. Um, so you're really supported throughout this process. And, um, and I think that covers your question. But you know, like I say, again, like I'm very straight up and honest that like, this is not a 30 day shred. This is not a magic pill situation. Um, people start feeling better as you can see, like quite quickly, but how healing works is it's not linear, right? Which like is some can be a little frustrating sometimes, but it's good to know. And it usually is like, you can go from, um, 10% to 40% and then you can go from 40% to 60% and then you get from 60 to 80 and then you kind of hang out at 80 a little bit and then you from 80 to 85, and 85 to 90, you know what I mean? So it's, it's usually like, we can get you feeling like a lot, like drastically better. And then once you're, once you get to that point, you start to kind of incrementally, um, a bit more slowly start feeling better. This is kind of the pattern that I see with people, but you're going to get some relief, um, pretty quickly. Um, Hamida, hello, my dear. I've been told gluten free, dairy free, low FODMAP, etc. I'm exhausted. Yeah, <laughs> so was I. So was I. Um, who can relate to that, right? You're clear. Same, exactly. Olivia says, I follow an alkaline diet, still feel bloated. Um, I don't, I mean, an alkaline diet can mean a lot of things. And as I explained, like stomach acid is essential for proper digestion. So um, the alkaline diet, while it probably encourages more veggies, which I'm totally here for, um, we don't want to alkalize our entire system, right? Because our stomach acid is essential to break down food, properly di digest things, protect our system, um, trigger the secretion of bile, like to break down fats, like it's really important. So we, do, we don't want to have an, an entirely alkaline system. That's not how the body works. Um, Carrie Lynn says, I've already had GI map testing. It has found small reading of H. pylori and high wheat allergy. Can this program still help me? I heard it's really hard to get rid of H. pylori. Carrie, I think you emailed me and I emailed you back. So um, you feel free to email me again. We can talk about this. If you had a GI map test, that's going to give you a lot of information. I would want to see if it had other issues going on. Um, and I would want Dr. Simon to take a look at this and, and prescribe you a regimen to get rid of H. pylori. Um, it doesn't have to be antibiotics. There are other things, including masticum, um, aloe vera, other things um, that she can bring into play with her level of expertise, with her training as a doctor of oriental medicine. Um, that can help get rid of it, but it's essential to get rid of it because H. pylori basically like eats up stomach acid and provides a breeding and, and causes inflammation. So we have to, even if you had that, like every other piece of this program would have to be addressed. Like, because this program is like the foundation, right? And then if you get um, stool testing or a GI map test, which is a type of stool test, right, it's going to show a bacterial overgrowth or something like that, right? We still have to repopulate the gut with good, back, gut, good flora, good gut bacteria. We still have to repair that gut lining because if you have any sort of overgrowth, it's going to have done damage to that gut lining. 
We still have to uh, reignite your body's own ability to secrete stomach acid, to secrete digestive enzymes. Um, we still have to work on stress because that could be affecting your motility, your digestion, your uh, stomach acid secretion, all these things. So Dr. Sima would come in with you and eradicate the H. pylori. And this program would scoop you up and help um, repair everything else because it leaves, it leaves damage, you know? Um, Claire says, yes, it's a nightmare. If you tell me the program will help me find peace, I'm happy with that answer. I, I feel very strongly that it, that it would. Yeah. Um, Janet says, thank you from Brittany. What's your take on digestive bitters and or dandelion root? Um, I love roasted dandelion root tea. I drink it all the time. It's really supportive of, um, liver health and bitter foods in general can help the, help the liver detoxify. It can also help the body secrete, um, uh, enzymes. So I think those things are great. Yeah. Um, uh, Jana says, clarify, we buy in now. We don't start till January 25th. Yes. You're going to get instant access to the cookbook and to um, uh, one or two other resources. And then we, we're all going to start together on January 25th. But everyone gets into the Facebook group. We start sharing. We start getting pumped. I'm kind of thinking about having a like welcome party this time. Um, maybe spicing things up a bit, <laughs> depending. Um, so yeah. Are you mostly plant-based, including raw and cooked foods? Um, Monta asked. Um, I would say this program's heavily plant-based. You can do it in, in different ways. So there's a section in this program that's like customized it to your needs. I've had people that are vegan do this program. You do not have to be vegan to do this program. My cookbook does include a few recipes with animal protein. Um, I am not personally against that. I'm also not going to convince anyone to be vegan or not be vegan. That is your own choice. Um, but I provide you with uh, kind of outlines for how to do it. If you're struggling with digestive issues overall, I wouldn't recommend a ton of raw foods because they are more difficult to digest. Um, even though I know people will say that they like have all their uh, natural enzymes, but like if they're harder to digest. So more cooked foods would probably be more beneficial for you. Um, uh, Claire says, question, if in a few months we need some support or have questions, can we reach out to you? One of my um, biggest obstacles has been getting a good start, but then having to pay hundreds for follow-up questions. Yeah, I hear you. Um, yeah, yeah, shoot me an email. You know, I mean, if I can answer it in an email, I will. If I feel like it's a whole thing that needs to take a like private session to review, um, then we'll have to do it in that way. But also like you get access to Dr. Saima, which like, y'all is worth this program um and she also like she gives you if you get the testing or you have tests get an analysis with her you can book a follow-up consultation with her as well and you guys her rate is very affordable very affordable because she is in this um and she really just wants to help you know and like she like she has a whole other practice and I brought her on here. So you can also do it um, with her or with me. Um, so you've got some options there. Okay, Rachel, whenever I eat anything or even drink anything, even water, I feel extremely full uh, quickly and get other symptoms like heart racing and bloating. How do you know how much to eat and what to eat when it doesn't matter what you eat and even a little trigger symptoms? I want to eat mindfully, but it's, but when it's hard, but it's hard when it's risks not eating enough. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a clear indication that you have gut dysfunction, that something's going on, right? Because not everyone feels that way and you shouldn't um, have to feel that way. So we have to really work on, um, you're probably not producing enough stomach acid, things probably aren't flowing through as, as properly as they could be. Um, and you're likely dealing with the, you know, dysbiosis, right? So we bring in targeted things inside of the program to kind of readjust your bacterial composition. Um, then these things should kind of start falling away. Um, from Rachel, if you got IgG food sensitivity testing done before healing the gut, how much did the results impact what you eat and do not eat? Good question. I'm so glad you asked this. Um, my personal opinion is kind of not at all, kind of not at all because of what I told you guys about leaky gut and food sensitivities, right? Like, and I, and I have, I mean, I have had students literally get food sensitivity tests, show that they're sensitive to tons of things. Um, and then take the test after the, my program and not have these sensitivities anymore. So it's not the food itself. It might be like one or two of them. Like I think having one or two food intolerances, you know, that makes sense. Loads of random things that you are sensitive to. It is because you're, it is a sign of gut dysfunction period. Right. Um, so I would not be sometimes, sometimes it can be helpful to kind of like, uh, 
go to these tests and kind of operate by them. But if this is driving you nuts, if you feel like you don't know what the heck to eat and you're left with like five foods, I say no. I say we need to work on your gut health, just like straight up. Jenna says, I want to start next week ASAP. So sick of the pain and suffering. Yeah, we're going to get you going, girl. Um, Tracy says, it seems like my food never digests, digests. And I feel like there's so much acid in my stomach. Try low FODMAP and bowels look very fuzzy. Can you help me with that? Um, yes. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, best practice, we would get you a stool analysis test to see what's going on within your stool, right? So to see, um, and did you feel better on a low FODMAP diet or did you feel worse, right? Like there's definitely, there's definitely dysbiosis going on here. Um, I'm not diagnosing, <laughs> that comes from your doctor, but there's definitely gut dysfunction, things aren't working as properly. And if you feel like, um, actually I'm really glad you brought this up. So if you feel like you have a burning in your stomach, um, that could be H. pylori. If you feel like you have, um, like if you take a, like hydrochloric acid or something and you feel like that makes things worse, like you feel the burning in your stomach, it could be because there's so much damage to your gut lining, right? So your gut lining isn't built up enough. So you're adding in this acid and it's just like your gut lining can't support it. Um, so there are a few things that could be happening here, right? Uh, we kind of address all of these topics within the program. Um, and also, some, you know, when we feel a heartburn or an acid reflux, it's usually because stomach acid is coming up the system. Very few people have too much stomach acid. Very few people. Most people have too little stomach acid. It is like running rampant <laughs> that people have too little stomach acid, right? So if you feel like you have acid reflux or heartburn, what is very likely happening is that you're not producing enough. And since you're not producing enough, it's not, you're not bringing down your food properly. And when you're not bringing down your food properly, the acid is kind of like sitting on top of the food and it's like fermenting in your body, which does not feel pleasant, right? Because you're not breaking it down. It's not moving through and then being moved out of the system. So then it's pushing the, the, the um, acid up the system, up your esophagus, right? Um, so that may be why you feel like you have so much acid, but it's actually quite the opposite. Um, sounds good. Thank you. Awesome. Um, awesome. I will do so. It's a three day gut reset, a link. Um, yeah, you guys can get that. Um, Jana, you're going to get access to that inside the program. Um, Rachel says, I just got your cookbook. Super excited and notice that there are a lot of raw uncooked recipes such as salad. I've read from other functional medicine doctors such as Dr. Axe. Pretty good that raw uncooked fruits and veggies are really hard to digest on the gut. Yeah, I said this, right? Also heard this about beans, black or mango beans. What's your perspective on this? Um, yeah, I mean, salads contain tons of nutrients, uh, which are great, right? And and usually plant diversity, which is really important, um, which once again is the number one indicator of a healthy gut, plant diversity, because it breeds different bacteria, right? Um, if you feel better eating cooked foods, eat cooked foods. There are also a lot of cooked foods in there, right? Even the pad thai, you can toss in the pan and cook it. Um, I, I actually eat it that way as well. Um, and then things with beans, y'all, I avoided beans for so long because I couldn't handle them. And I freaking love beans. <laughs> I love black beans. I love eating them. They're so freaking delicious. Something happened in 2020 when I was just eating beans all over the place. Um, are they, can they be harder to digest? Yes. Do they also contain, oh, what's it called? Ogly, beta, beta, uh, ogly, or... I can't, I would type it out. I can't pronounce it. They contain a very specific strain of like prebiotic that's actually really beneficial for um, your gut microbes. So um, I'm not going to make anyone eat beans. Um, but I also think that just stating that beans are hard on bad for your gut is a really uh, large overgeneralization. But Dr. X is pretty cool. Um, from Barb, I have histamine intolerance and really limits foods I could eat. Would I be able to do this program? I have dealt with gut issues for over 50 years. Hi, Barb. I'm so sorry to hear that. Um, and um, histamine intolerance is a sign that you have a gut issue, right? So histamine, our gut microbes break down histamine, right? So it's a sign that you have a gut issue. What we really need to do is take a look at if you have any overgrowth or anything like that and deal with that. And also do like, um, like repair your gut. In the interim, you can eat lower histamine foods. Mm -hmm. um, for Rachel, how do you know what type of probiotic to take? And is it important that probiotic be soil-based? Um, so if you get 
I, we use a very specific probiotic um, in this program that's recommended that you guys get access to via full script, right? It's a very specific probiotic. Um, it is a spore-based probiotic because it's not, it doesn't actually, um, it doesn't actually contain specific strains of probiotics because what we have to really realize is that our gut hosts like 38 trillion gut microbes. <laughs> Pretty wild, right? So there's a lot of gut microbes in there. And any, even like a really high probiotic is going to contain like 20 billion um, strains, right? So we have to make sure that this is a synergistic relationship that's happening, which is also why I like the spore-based probiotic because it doesn't go in with exact like strains like lactobacillus or anything like that. Um, but it goes in and kind of helps like your, your gut like re like, uh, recolonize your gut bacteria. And then we have to make sure that we're eating the right foods to support it, or these gut microbes aren't going to stay. They're just going to move through the system, right? They're going to like, it's like planting a seed in your garden and not watering it. It's not going to, it's going to die, right? So that's the same thing with this. Also, like there isn't a ton of information to show that um, different probiotic strains actually make it through stomach acid and into the large intestine where we want them to go into the colon, which is where the body has most of its gut bacteria as opposed to the small intestine that should be like relatively sterile. Um, we want it to go into the large intestine, but think about like if you're taking a probiotic from, and it has to be refrigerated and then you're putting it into your body that runs at like 98 degrees and then into the stomach acid. I, I don't think we have a lot of evidence that's actually making it into your colon, right? So soil based, spore based um, is more so my go-to. We work with a very specific one. Um, and then we've seen other strains of probiotics, you know, help other things. Uh, as well, um, different strains for different things too, but we have to make sure we're feeding them properly. Um, okay, we've got links. If I didn't sign up, the doctor when I signed up, can I add that when we start on the 25th? Yes, for sure, you can. Nicole, do you think a lactose intolerance can be reversed? Is this all the questions? I thought there were way more. Um, great, oh great. I thought I had so many more to catch up on. Um, do you think a lactose intolerance can be reversed? I think you could probably train your gut bacteria to digest lactose because that's what we've kind of seen, right? Like the gut is like a muscle. You go in to the gym and you pick up the small weights and then you pick up the medium weights and then you pick up the big weights, right? And these gut bacteria help us in breaking down um, some of these foods, some of these, um, some of these enzymes, uh, lactase for lactose, right? A lactose is a type of sugar. Um, so do I think that could be reversed? I think we can make big strides on it. Is it my like number one recommendation to even try to do that? Um, probably not. Like I don't really think dairy is the most beneficial for all of us. And I also, another really important thing to name, to point out here, you guys, is that it's, it's really dose dependent, right? So you may be able to deal with like a cube of cheese or like a slice of cheese or something, or like a small glass of raw milk or some kefir. But like when you eat a whole bowl of cottage cheese or something like that, you have a flare up, right? So some of these things are dose dependent as well. Um, kind of coming back to how many gut bacteria we have in our system that can support breaking down these things. Um, it's pretty cool though, right? It's kind of cool. Um, Janice says, thank you for this masterclass. This has been by far the most helpful um, information and love, love the interactive Q and A. I feel hopeful. Yes, you're so welcome. Awesome. From Hamida, if I didn't sign up, yes. Um, we covered that. Uh, yes, you can sign up with Dr. Saima. Um, and Nicole says, gotcha. Um, Carrie Lynn says, do you believe in slow introduction to herbs and foods? Mm -hmm. If you've been suffering, I mean, Carrie, Carrie Lynn, I believe you, you mentioned H. pylori, right? Like we have to eradicate that for you to start feeling better. Then we have to really repair. So I would really advise you to reach out to me to book something with Saima to get into this program because we're going to have to repair all the damage that this has done. Um, and we, we have to eradicate this or like, you're never going to feel right. There's going to be burning in your stomach. Um, you may feel bloating uh, when you haven't even eaten, right? These are other signs of H. pylori. Um, and your stomach acid is just not, it's just not operating at its best ability. Um, so we, we can do that. And, and throughout that process, um, the slow reintroduction to herbs and foods, yeah. I mean, if you feel like you're very sensitive, then we start slow, like a, like a muscle, right? You don't go in and bench 300. You start with freaking dumbbells, you know, and you build it up from there. Um, and we want at least a tablespoon of these foods at one time um, to help kind of feed these microbes. But definitely take care of the H. pylori and reach out if you need help. Um, thank you. Yeah, you're so welcome. Cool, you guys. I think I answered questions for a very long time. <laughs> definitely more than 15 minutes. Um, I love you all. Thank you for spending this evening or afternoon with me. It means a lot to me. It is an honor to be able to do this work, work and to help educate on it. Um, so it's not something that I take lightly. And um, 
Monta, thanks, Hannah. You're so welcome. Rachel, thank you so much. This is wonderful. You guys are so welcome. Um, I loved being with here, here with you tonight. I would love to hear your biggest takeaways in the Facebook group that if you're in that or on Instagram with me, um, don't be a stranger. Please come and say hi. And I would, I am so excited to see you guys inside of this program. Um, it's going to be epic and helping you all transform is like the greatest gift I could have been given truly. So, um, thank you. Thank you. And have a wonderful night. Um, and Go, get, go eat some delicious gut healthy meal and get some good rest. Yeah. Um, okay. Awesome. Bye Monta. Bye Tracy. Bye Michelle. Uh, you guys are so welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye everyone.